All right, guys, the day is here. The Highlanders got some new changes in these testing grounds, and you want to know how to get the most out of him. Well, I want to tell you. But unfortunately, this character's got a little bit of jank, so we're going to have to get through some weeds. And unfortunately, again, no amount of me telling you what to do with this character is actually going to help you press the buttons, which are a little bit harder than most characters. But we're going to look over the changes and see how we can pull all of that together, all of his moves set together into a sensible plan to win some games and to get damage on our opponents. All right, so right off the bat here, we want to establish our win condition. We want to establish what you need to do with this character to get damage reliably and win some games. And that answer is be here. You want to be in offensive stance as much as possible. The more time you spend in this stance getting damage, the better your chances are of winning a match, all right? So your ultimate goal is to be here. Now there's a couple of ways to get there, and we're gonna go over that. All right, so first off, let's talk about the basic ways. You can light, hold down your heavy, get in there. You can heavy, hold down your heavy, get in there. You can hold down your heavy, and you can faint a heavy and hold down your heavy, and you'll fast flow into it. You can also, after a dodge attack, hold your heavy, get into that. Uh, after the chain light, get into it. But not after chain heavy. You can't do it after chain heavy. Alright. But what we can do after the chain heavy now is something a little new. Something a little new. After this chain heavy, we can zone, faint that, and pass. That's cool. And we want to be using all these tools to get an offensive stance so we can get damage, right? Because it's where your unreactable offense exists. And we'll talk more about that in a sec. First, though, we want to talk about the game plan of Highlander. How we're getting into this stance. Because it's changed a little. I've told you all the ways you get into it with the hold and whatnot. But in-game, how you actually enter the stance is typically, in the past, you would, you would do a lot of backlighting to get into it. But they've changed the, the distance that you gain when you backlight now, and it is incredibly unsafe. So we're going to have to think a little harder about how we get into offensive stance, because as of right now, we don't have a truly safe option to get there. Right now, almost all of Highlander's options to get into offensive stance, other than just somebody eating the light, are very guard breakable. Heavy attack. Kelta curse. Hold. Soft faint. That'll work. And then, of okay. course, All right, bet. a wonderful light attack. Now, there are some ways around these glaring vulnerabilities in his kit. And one of the most obvious ones you can apply is range. So the Celtic curse is actually a great move. You just need to have proper spacing on it. Because you don't want to get guard broken out of it. And I've compiled some clips together to show you some different use cases for the different options out of Celtic Curse. And we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each of those different options. Or why you might want to do one or the other. Depending on what your opponent is doing. So for the first option, just simply letting it go. It's... Believe it or not... Uh, a harder parry than you would think. The animation is a little weird. I've seen it get missed more than a lot of other parries. I don't know what it is about it, but it does. And if they dodge too late, it can. Uh, it'll just. It'll hit them. And also, if they don't actually choose an option and you bounce it off guard, you're in offensive stance. So you won. So if you hit the attack, you got damage, and you're in offensive stance. And if they block the attack, you get some block damage and you're in offensive stance. And, mind you, you're in a good frame advantage position after landing that block. Because they won't be able to light you out of your kick afterwards. We'll go into more detail about that specifically later, once we've covered all the other options. Yep, 
So let's talk about this side cancel. All right. So in the first clip we see, he goes for the deflect on the top thing. Because he put himself into his, uh, his little stance move, he felt the need to cancel it and go into a deflect. And because it was something that was forced upon him in the moment, some people will mess this up. Because this is technically... This, this side cancel is technically very reactable. It's, it's incredibly reactable. Very easy to parry. If you just wait for that, you, it, it's free, right? So you want to be very careful about when you use this. This isn't just do it because, because we feel like throwing it out, right? Even though it does look really cool and you want to do it a lot. Uh, so if you have somebody that's going for, for deflex or parries and they're not properly reacting you can use this to hit them and go into offensive stance but another way you can use it is i'll show you this quick clip of him interrupting me with a bash and then later in the fight on another round i make the read that he's going to try to do that again because he's having a hard time dealing with this i'm, I'm mixing up my options out of celtic curse a lot right so i see him dodge forward and i side cancel and beat his back so that's another way that you can use it, and that's a really good tool. But these are both sort of reactionary options. You need to be looking at what your opponent is doing as you're as you're doing this move. Because it's a long move, so it's sort of it sets up a game when you start it, and you need to make sure that you pick the right option out of it. Okay, so I know these two clips aren't a great representation of me actually using this move correctly but they're great instances of when you could use this right so in the first clip i technically fast i fast flow to offensive stance before canceling to the guard break but i could just as easily have done this and cancel to the guard break and then in the second clip i do this but the opponent didn't properly react to the side so which means she just sort of dodge attack and there are people out there who do not like dealing with celtic curse and we'll just dodge attack it and despite this cancel sometimes hitting them sometimes it doesn't so it seems like a decent risk reward for some players who don't like dealing with celtic curse and so in that instance you just come up and wait free parry right uh i am not using this as often as i think maybe i should and i need to incorporate it a little bit more but um I prefer just letting it bounce off guard because even if they do dodge attack, you usually get into your hyper armor fast enough to trade with them. But still, that doesn't make this move useless. There are people who don't like dealing with Celtic Curse and hitting them with this right quick will force a certain reaction. And if you can read it right, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing because if somebody tries to parry or deflect, bam. <laughs> Alright, so now we want to talk about fast flow into hold for the soft bait. This has, for me, limited uses because this sort of extends your guard break vulnerability if you don't immediately choose an option. And then even if you do immediately choose an option, basically all of them except the light are guard breakable if they, if they do it at the right timing and... Um, most of them are like dodgeable so uh i mean that there's there's an argument to be made for kick into thing but you need to be careful about um sort of where your guard goes afterwards oh that's another thing i should mention about celtic curse if you go into celtic curse and you soft faint and you have your guard here on the left here i'm going to do it on the left if i go into celtic curse it makes it go top and then i have to switch my guard which guard switching in offensive stance is awful so when you do want to use this move make sure you keep your guard top so that you're in offensive stance and can immediately choose an option now if somebody knows that they might be ready for this for this little boot right so that'll that'll that's really only going to work on people who really know the matchup though but that is something to mention that'll help ease your your pain with the character's inputs because if you see i come here and i try to press a light it's gonna it's gonna take a while to come out they're gonna dodge that easy uh so it's it's not it's not great now in that kiyoshi clip and in some other certain matchups you can want you might want to do this because if they go into their their all guard or if they, if you space it right and they try to hit you out and you just let them one of these heavies go, 
you'll beat them to that, right? So, and Aramusha's is getting lazy. He doesn't want to react. He throws this little thing out. That's smacking him across the face. Kyoshin tries to get lazy. That's smacking him across the face. BP gets lazy, pops his thing too early. You, you can literally react to him pressing the button, smack him across the face, right? So there are use cases for this. I don't like it quite as much, but um, you're just going to need to play around with it. Of course, Celtic Curse isn't the only option we have when we're at good range. We can range all of our moves. We can now range the backstep light, because we do need to range this. Um, I think there may be a way to unlock and do this, uh, but of course that won't be safe if they know you're going to do it. Uh, I don't use that at all. Um, but if you are, for whatever reason, cast in a medium range, backstep a light, and if you're at a certain range, you can just let a heavy fly. And I'll show you a couple clips of me spacing those properly. So as you see, you can see, you can still make use of the backstep flight, and you can do that. As you do it, you can sort of like look at what your opponent's doing, decide whether or not you want to go for this heavy to trade, because there's a bit of a, a window here, where you can throw that, or if you want to go just straight into your offense and stance, which is, uh, which is very good, especially at range now, since the not a lot is going to be, not, since you properly spaced it, they won't be guard breaking you. They're going to have to try to interrupt you, which, unfortunately, dodge dodge kick is nowhere near as strong as it used to be. It's very slow now, so they want you to do this. Um, just to touch on that subject right quick, um, because he does get so much more pressure with faint kick now, I think this is okay. You will be getting damage much more reliably out of offensive stance and you don't you won't need to be applying damage with defensive reads like you used to because oddly enough on live offensive stance is the light them and defensively read a dodge kick uh, a lot of the time or, or beta parry and then for the heavy of course we don't want to be guard broken so we can throw it at range and then another option we have for the heavy, of course, or for any option, is a proper frame advantage. So if we don't want our heavy to get guard broken, we can let it fly after frame advantage. So we're going to get a clip of that, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so things to note about counter guard breaking and throwing our heavy. This heavy is very slow. If somebody... If we counter guard break somebody and then immediately throw this heavy, I have been kicked out of it. So you do need to worry. It's not, it's not completely safe. And of course, people will parry it, so you will need to sometimes mix it up from your frame advantage and get your guard break. And then, you know, you get your top heavy and you're in offensive stance and this is where you want to be, right? So there's some creative ways we need to get here. Um, and then another thing is previously from frame advantage, you could backstep the light safely, can no longer do that. Also, important to note from frame advantage, Celtic Curse is not guard break safe. If they buffer another guard break after you counter guard break them and you go into Celtic Curse, they will catch you. I will talk more about that later. In fact, I will probably release just a shorter rant style video about this in particular. And it's the one main thing I want changed on this character. But uh, I'm going to make a, a longer, like a separate video about that because I think... There's some things we need to discuss there specifically, but as of right now, if you get frame advantage and you throw this heavy, and in my clip he tried to go for a light parry because he, he he you know he's used to me trying to backstep this light, so he was trying to go to either space me out and go into his own crushing counter light, or you know he he just made a wrong read, and my heavy smacked him across the face and we won, right? And so. You're going to want to be using this a lot from frame advantage. You do want to mix it up because, again, uh, you can get hit out of it from bashes. I've seen it get hit out of from bashes. And the hyper armor is still kind of slow. So if they light directly afterwards, uh, you may not trade, even though you would, you, you would like to. Now, the frame advantage from a counter guard break and the frame advantage from blocking a light are different. The counter guard break frame advantage is weaker. You have less frame advantage. So if you block a light and throw this, you'll definitely trade with any lights that they try to throw at you. All right, next, we want to talk about the new favorite tool. I love this thing. Zone is amazing. And the infinite 
is cool looking. Look how cool he looks, just infinitely swinging around his giant sword. Don't you wish you were as awesome and manly and cool as him? But there's some things to note about it. We'll see if I can pull up a couple clips, and then we'll talk about what happens in those. All right, so let's talk about the zone attack. It's a good option from both neutral and from frame advantage because it's got faster hyper armor than your normal heavy. You can sort of see how you get hyper armor then, and if you just throw the heavy, the hyper armor is just going to come out later because it's a slower move overall, right? So obviously you get the hyper armor faster in the faster move. And uh, it's good to to feign it to parry, like you saw me do on the crushing counter when I read that that guy was going to try to crush and counter it a second time, because you will trade with crushing counters. If they crush and counter one of these, um, the next one will just trade with their option, unless it's Kyoshin and, or BP, and they crush and counter into their all guard and either stance you or flip you. So be careful about that. That's the matchup check. But moving on. Um, and then also, if you're parry banning people, right, um, it's good to do this after chain finishers. The timing's a little weird, so hopefully I hit it. Yeah. You can, of course, that feint to guard break is good. People will be looking for that because this does a considerable amount of block damage if you're just letting this full combo go on people. It's just, it's going to be chipping away at them and they don't want to eat all that. But then there's another level to it. There's another level to this move, right? And I have not fully unlocked this thing's abilities because it's admittedly a pretty hard timing to hit so for the normal f heavies to faint to hold this is pretty simple this is like this is pretty quick and easy to do but the zone there's a bit of of of, of a of a weirdness to it right because it's faster you need to be really quick so if you're even a little bit slow you'll get this you'll get this version right which is just you went back to neutral and held heavy right and you don't want that so you need to be quick with it so after chain finisher i find that that is a bit of a hard input to to hit and then you need to be really quick with that too so you're really gonna have to drill that to get that right and then i mean you can do it after every version and you need to learn Okay, faint this one, bam. You get into it, right? Um, and that'll be good. So if you condition people to not parry this, right? You can you can let a couple go on their guard to get some block damage and then faint and get an offensive stance and there you're in offensive stance in their face, right? And you can do like the, uh, you throw the lights, you can do the whatever, right? But this is, that is gonna be tough because you also, and remember with the Celtic Curse, how we didn't wanna change our guard? We wanted to keep our guard top so that we could immediately pick an option. It's the same. There's a there's a bit of shenanigans going on here with the zone as well. If we do the zone and try to feint and move, it'll input the guard swap first. It won't be like with the heavy, because you'll see here with the heavy, I feint it, move guard, it doesn't matter. It'll still fast flow. But for whatever reason with the zone, you cannot do that. If you try to switch guard... Let me see if I can get it better. It'll do it as if it was just a neutral hold to thing. So you need to keep your guard on the same side when you do this. All right. All right, my children, we finally made it. We're about 19 minutes into this video, it seems like, and we're finally going to talk about offensive stance. What to actually do when you're here, what your opponents can try to do when you're here, and all of that good stuff. So, I mean, goodness, this is gonna be shaping up to be a long one, but I think it may actually be easier to talk about offensive stance than getting to offensive stance. I feel like Highlander's main weakness right now is getting here from close range neutral. It is rather difficult to get here. In my opinion, This is that's where he struggles the most. But once you're here, We've got all sorts of crazy stuff we can do. 
Now there are some things to note about how we got here. So we're gonna go over that first. All right, so things we want to take note of. Technically, this testing grounds is the old version, but the things that we want to talk about will not be different here. If you saw in that first clip, if you enter offensive stance from a light, or in fact, if you apply any sort of light hit stun and then go into your kick, you will trade with their light if they try to interrupt you. It'll be the same for the heavy or the Celtic curse, any other option that isn't that offensive stance light that I just threw. So when you get into offensive stance, from a light, the only thing that is completely safe from being interrupted is just more lights. And anything you do after that light that isn't another light can be lighted. So that is important to note if you are brand new to the character. Alright, so now that we've on entered offensive stance and we are paid attention to how we got there, right? So if we entered it from a light or if at any point we apply a light during it, we know that we can get lighted out of any of our longer are longer options right so we need to be careful they'll hit you with a couple of these and then they'll stop and then they'll faint and they'll parry your little light right so that's something you want to be looking to do with this character because your kick is not safe but it's okay because you can faint that kick now and parry a light after that as well but if we did enter offensive stance through a heavy or we through other means landed a heavy while in offensive stance, our pressure is very high right here. I would also like to note that the crush and counter applies a medium hit stun, not light hit stun, so it's the same as the heavies. If you've landed a heavy off of block or just landed it, right? So if they block this heavy, they cannot dodge the follow-up light that you throw. So they kind of have to sit there and try to block it. Okay, sorry, I'm back again. Uh, they can actually deflect it, though the uh the deflect frame is a little different than just a normal block frame you can deflect that so you will need to be careful about characters assassins essentially now of course once you've hit them with this of course your pressure gets a little bit weaker as we spoke about but it's fine again not everybody's going to try to light you out of offensive stance because they're scared of you canceling to to parry right and so even hitting someone with a light you can do this now and you'll still you'll you'll catch people right because it's no longer just oh fully reactable i decided to throw a heavy i decided to throw a kick you just instantly dodge attack right so now that we've got this offensive stance is crazy strong um and whenever we do land a heavy or block a or they block a heavy and we go into offensive stance this kick afterwards can't be interrupted they've got to make a read now, of course, they can interrupt the faint to guard break. So if they did throw a light into that, you're going to eat that, right? But that's just, you want to know, be aware of what reads your opponent is capable of making. And so then what you want to do in, in response to what they're trying to do to get you out of this. Because just as you want to be here to win games, they don't want you here. If you're fighting Highlander, you want him out of this stance as often as possible. The longer he's here, the better, because his neutral pressure is not strong. It's better with the zone, but it is not good by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so that's... That's about everything I want to go over. There's obviously a lot more that you could talk about with this character. Obviously, I didn't go over punishes at all. Um, the new punishes are going to be... For guard break, obviously, you want the top heavy. And for light parry, you want the side heavy. And for wall splat, you want the side heavy. Um, because while it may be ingrained in your memory uh light parry into this is technically one less damage so you're gonna want to uh you're gonna want to get into this and it doesn't actually change your pressure situation uh from going into offensive stance after landing that side heavy so there's it's just one extra damage and actually this is another thing to mention this heavy here costs 12 stamina the offensive stance heavy costs 24 stamina and the uh, regular heavy costs 12. Uh, I, say, I say the wrong value. Those punishes, to get those punishes, you want to throw 
the side heavy instead of the offensive stance heavy because you'll be saving stamina and stamina economy is a problem with highlander and that six that little six extra stamina could come in handy and another thing we want to talk about with with highlander is you see in the clip that i showed we made good use of the kick mix up i had conditioned him in previous matches to move so to not move so i kick him and then so he thinks oh maybe he'll do it again faint the guard break grab him right because i've been also fanning to neutral and pairing some dodge attacks but then after we've hit him with all that we've gotten a bunch of we it, we've used a lot of stamina up so one other thing that we can do and just a, a fun little tip for highlander is that if you enter offensive stance on somebody you can do this little back dodge immediately afterwards and this will give you a second a second of breathing room and a bit of range between them so that the only real options they have that'll hit you are some of their longer range options, which maybe you can punish with this, or maybe if they, they'll dodge straight into the kick, right? And it'll give you that little extra breathing room to just get a bit of stamina back so that you can get this and do your punish without, without running out of stamina. So beyond his neutral being weak, you also need to be aware of your stamina bar. Running out of stamina with Highlander is not great. And I think also, uh, with his new feignable kick, his, his st pressure against you when you're out of stamina is crazy strong. I think I'll make a quick little short on that. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. But um, that's really about all I want to talk about in this vid. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, drop a like. Leave a comment down below with any like findings you have about the character. Uh, any any tips that maybe you've you've stumbled upon in your chant in your your playthrough on him with this new. Uh, with the new testing grounds. Also, I'm just noticing that there's something very weird going on with my chainmail. Huh. Well, uh, yeah, uh, go get your practice in because there is some weird stuff going on with Highlander's inputs. And of course, um, if you're a, an old style Highlander, your wave dashing is gone. So you need to get used to this and you need to get used to the fact that they want you to do this instead of instead of this and if you're a new highlander just in general guard switching in uh, offensive stance can feel weird so you're going to need to do some some of the, some of the text and whatnot to make that less less obvious you gotta you just got like buttons you need to practice right and also you want to remember the thing with the couple curse that i talked about and the thing with the zone that i talked about those are going to be big all right See y'all and have a lovely day.